easily mistooken. Tooken. For like your P with your E or your C. <laughs> Could you okay. maybe like L for Laura in case somebody is spelling challenge. Not that anyone would Not that we're saying no, that we're, way, we're not naming any names. It's Portuguese influence, so the Spanish do it in Indonesia. The way the Germans had me enunciate it was Maratus. And I think we found some online things that said it. It looks more like Maratus. I was going to say Maratus. Yeah. Or Maratus. The way they had Yeah. That's what I initially said that the Maratus were for. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll create our own. That's you right. You can yeah. call it whatever you want. Because it doesn't matter what name you call it, it's still the rainforest. Yes, it is. So, okay, there's lots of rainforest. Where does this one go? What, what's like the span of it? Where does um, it go? It's scattered across 10,000 islands in Indonesia. Indonesia. It is on, this particular one is on one of the bigger islands, mm -hmm. and it's on a mountain, and they're wiping out the entire mountain with millions of trees a day. Misinformation that's out. I don't know what you found on the internet. These are the facts. Yeah. Tens of millions of trees are being pulled out of rainforest daily. Yeah. yeah. For teak, for palm oil, mm -hmm. for other man made needs. Less than 1% of the rainforest has been discovered. We don't even know all the life forms there, and we're destroying them at thousands and hundreds a day, depending on how we go through. And less than 1% being discovered, we've already found from a violet alone last year that nearly got trampled in a rainforest the cure to leukemia. Hmm. So 99% of the other things we haven't discovered may be cures to the other 99% of the problems on the planet if we just slow down enough to find them. Hmm. And stop also, we need to worry that we're killing our planets. And there's right. rocket scientists. Oxygen, 40% yeah. of the planet's oxygen from rainforest. 30% yeah. of fresh water, 30% of medicine and food supplies, rainforest. So if we wipe out our oxygen, yeah, 40% of it, only 40% of it. And we only wipe out 30% of our clean water. We can rest assured that the EPA will finish that for us when the U.S. government passes complete regulation this fall. That's really smart and timely. But aside from all that, you asked the scenario of, of um, the lost water, the lost air, and two degrees now. We are mm -hmm. two degrees Celsius centigrade, rather, two degrees centigrade from core meltdown. We are literally five years, 10 tops, away from everything underneath 250 feet of sea level now being completely below water. That would include Los Angeles <sighs> and many cities in North America. Mm -hmm. Miami. Seattle. You know, Louisiana. that coastal thing. I want to show this map on here. I don't know, can you, um, that, that guy's out the JPL, yeah. Please, let yeah. me stay focused. Okay. One at a time. So. So what can I say for you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to fire you off questions okay. after you slate. Okay. We're going to do a slate first, then after you do a slate, then come back to your name and a pitch for the film that I can put on like a promo, like we did okay. when we have Elto and we have uh, Ed. Okay. Make your story somewhere, a short thing that you would like on the website for people to see, somewhere between that six second link and the 10 hour one that Elto has, because the ring shop is down, um, that can go on the website. We may also use part of this in the film or not, but do the slate and the promo first, and then we'll go through the questions. Do you want to, like, approve the frames? I already looked at them, so if you haven't moved it since I looked at it, it was fine. Just to zoom in and focus and zoom out. Okay. Ready when you are. Okay. Hi, I'm Laurel Harris. That's L-A-U-R-E-L. -E Harris is H-A-R-R-I-S. I don't know if funny. there's anything. Was well, I was thinking that. Never mind. Okay, so. You said, let's come up with something. Yeah. So. You give your name again, like, and then A for the Merchants of Ben Barnes, then blah blah. What? Did you do that? <laughs> no. Your name, title of the film, Won't You Help Us? It's about blah, blah, and then go Okay, ahead. what's the title of the film again, exactly? Maratus Rainforest. Maratus Rainforest. Should not die. Should not die. Laurel Harris, Maratus Rainforest Should Not Die. And you want a little bit about me? Oh, no, no, no. I wanted you to be like you're doing a promo like I did. Hey, this is Meg Lee Okay, I haven't there. seen his, so just tell me real quick. So you want me okay. to do name? Your name. Yeah. Film title. Film title. And some reason what the film is about and why people should watch it and help us do the film. Okay. Your pitch. Laurel 
Laurel Harris, Maratus rainforest should not die. Without these rainforests, we have no idea how quickly our life could be completely altered here as we know it now. Without existence of the rainforests, we are losing precious air, precious wood, and precious species that are dying off at, an, at a rate that's nearly as fast as the dinosaurs did 65 million years ago. Our Earth is in trouble, and we need your help. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Um, so, the UN was supporting this film. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Do you know now the UN is not supporting the film? Mm-hmm. And you know the reason why? The reason why is not because I called them at 6.30 on a Saturday morning, as they're alleging, because the phone records you're on them will reflect that I called them at 8.37 in the morning. It had nothing to do with the phone call. It had to do with the fact that I said I was going to use the footage that they don't want to use, which was me interviewing an ambassador. Well, I'm a camera person. We have a list of questions. And he gave testimony on they telling us that, please, no more noise on the set. Guys, I'm serious. I've asked about this before. It's the last time I'm going to ask. So they knew 50 years ago they should have stopped this. They didn't. They figured we'd have the technology to change it by the time we got here. Not their problem. They needed the money then. How does that make you feel? This could have been aborted 50 years ago. I don't know if I want to speak to the UN, honestly. I don't speak, to the UN. speak about the UN. You're no, asking no, me. I'm just saying, how does the emotion that I make you feel about if we knew about this, why didn't we stop it? I'm just planning this thought of the question of how does that make you feel that we knew about this and we, we, we it's no longer, we don't have any more wait time. We can't keep speculating is this happening? It is. We have to stop. No, we don't have any more wait time as we know it. Am I speaking to camera or am I speaking to you? Always to camera. Okay. And you're just keeping the role? Um, we don't have any more wait time as we know it. I think what it's going to come down to right now is individuals getting involved, individual corporations, and people that have a heart and a passion for this project, for life to change for the better. And that comes down to each and every one of us, as we've said before. But it's more dire than we realize. Isn't this just American propaganda because you guys already have all the teak wood and the ivories and all the nice stuff, and now that the rest of us want it, you just want to ban us? It's not real. This no, thing. it's it's very real. This whole issue is very, very real. The reason it's real is because it's like ripples in the ocean or ripples in in a pool. It's been affecting all of us on a grand scale for so long that we don't even have a full comprehension of what's going to happen if this rainforest, if these rainforests continue to disappear at the rate they're going. It's mind-boggling. Are you a tree hugger? I'm a total tree hugger. And I'm proud to admit it. Are you a forest hugger? I'm a forest hugger. What do you say about the people who can't see the forest through the trees? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Why are trees important to you today? I like to breathe. There's this little thing called breath that I like to do, and I think probably you do too. And without trees, it would be a little tough. Do you have any um, respiratory infections, sinus problems? So you're blessed. You're not someone who has bad breathing problems. No, I feel Picture really fortunate. with 40% oxygen and population still growing. How does it feel to have 40% less oxygen and asthma? So you've seen those scientific photos maybe of the future, those rendered photographs of what it might be like in the future. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like places now where people have to feel like they... I don't want to live like people now where they feel like they have to go outside with a mask on their face 24-7. Where is the humanity in all of this? Where's the tenderness and compassion for these creatures that are dying at a rapid rate every day? And that includes us. I'm one person, what can I do? Okay, so this is gonna sound really out there to some people. I don't have a problem saying I'm a little bit of an extremist when it comes to conservation. But simple things like not using as much paper. Do you know how much of the forest is destroyed from paper products being made? How about using less water? Not running the tap water every time you wash the dishes for an unlimited amount of time or when you brush your teeth at night. How about using your car less? If you're somebody that drives, how about figuring out your schedule so that you're creating less time 
going from place to place and putting it all in one bunch time. How about reaching out to somebody and saying, go meatless for a night? Because by using less meat in our diets, we're telling the cattle industry, hey, we're not happy with how much of the cattle industry is destroying rainforests. What about those people who've got to have their palm oil, their chai, their mocha latte, their teakwood? Why can't I have it? Okay, there's ways that we can do this. We can be sustainable workers. We can work with forest, uh, let me say that again. Sustainable forestry. That's one huge answer to this problem. It's going in and creating laws for this kind of deforestation or for this kind of cutting so that we're doing select cutting and not clear cutting. Huge difference. We would save millions of acres of forestry just by doing sustainable forestry practices. Did you realize that what you just said is a complete oxymoron to what's about to happen this fall in the United States? Until I told NBC Today Show this two weeks ago, they didn't know it either, but it's actually been a pending law in the books now for almost a year. And, and they um, are now voting into law the possibility that they can no longer use any scientific data to find any companies through the EPA for air, water, soil contamination because it's not fair because the executives sitting on the board of advisors for the EPA were appointed by Senate and Congress all out and to work at Exxon, BP, no conflict going on there, I don't think. How does it make you feel that you're saying to this that they're about to deregulate all